Okay, let's talk about, in my opinion, when I would run the mid zone. When would I have my running back <clears throat> run for the inside leg of the offensive tackle? All right, so I guess what I'm saying is, when would be the times that whether I'm going strong or weak, that I would have this running back lined up at approximately six and a half yards and running for somewhere in this area, inside leg of the tackle, uh, the B gap, you know, this is the A or the B gap, some course like that, okay? All right, I'm going to cover that particular zone play, where most other people will start off with the angles of the line and on the third step and so forth. Let's talk about why we would run that play, okay? All right, so here I go. We're talking about the mid zone, all right? First of all, all right, I would basically, now I'm going to put two backs in the backfield. When I have a play like this, say I've got a tackle, I've got an end, maybe I've got a strong safety, <clears throat> maybe I've got a middle linebacker, maybe I've got a Sam backer, maybe I've got a Will. All right, maybe I've got a, a look like that. This is an over defense, I've got a three technique. Well, et cetera, all right? The only time that I'd run this drop step opposite, okay, and run for that inside leg of that guy right there, this would be the only time, okay, would be if I want to run some lead play strong, all right, where I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the full back on that guy right there. I'm going to have the center and guard do this. He's going to block him. I might bring somebody else in motion to block that guy. Okay, so what this play is, it's an inside zone, okay, to the tight end. The tight end's going to release and block the strong safety. This fullback's going to isolate this outside linebacker, okay, and I want this, this running back, actually, I want this blocking back to be able to pick up that guy, but I want him to move a little bit. So when this back moves a little bit like this, okay, at the outside, at the inside leg of the guard, the quarterback opens up and he's got to get out of his way. That makes the linebackers move a little bit, okay? That's probably about the only time that I would run this the, <clears throat> at the inside leg, at the inside leg of, the, of the tackle on the strong side. I do not like running the mid zone with a single back like this and running at the inside leg of the tackle, okay? The mid zone. The reason I don't like it is when you run the mid zone course, all right, and you don't put a fullback on that backer, when the guard, the tackle, and the tight end have to block these guys, when you run that course right there at the inside leg of the tackle, okay, this backer never moves far enough, okay? He never really, if I was going to run a zone play, I'd prefer to run a play where I'm going to make this guy move a little more. I want to run at the inside leg of the tight end, or I want to run at the inside leg of the guard where I can get up on him fast enough. So I guess what I'm saying is the inside zone play to a three technique, okay, all right, with no lead blocker, and this guy goes about like that, this guy never is forced to to move or to scrape. When you run a wider zone path, he has a tendency to scrape more. They move more down the line. So, like I said before, if I was running an isolation play where I wanted the fullback to isolate the Sam backer to the strong side on a defense like that, and here's a strong safety, and I'm doing some blocking scheme like this, I don't mind running inside leg of the tackle because this guy can search out that backer and the tackle doesn't have to block him. The tackle can block the end, the tight end can block out. Okay? Well, it would be something like this. Okay? Say you had a, uh, a, a defense like a 3-4 uh, defense. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, so you had an end, you had a Sam, and you had a strong safety, and you had a Mike linebacker. Okay? When they go like this, like this, like this, okay? He searches out that linebacker. We may run inside leg of the tackle, okay? That's about the only time I like that angle on the strong side. And it's because of all the experience I've had, all right? So the mid zone, I'm not going to talk about that much, okay? 
the mid zone being, all right, the, lan the running back runs for the inside leg of the tackle, all right? But I will talk about the mid zone to the weak side because I think the best play in football right now, okay, let me show you this one right here. The very best play that I can think of is the mid zone. Remember, what is the mid zone? The mid zone is drop step opposite for the inside leg of the tackle. It might almost be the butt of the tackle, but inside leg of the tackle to the weak side, okay? All right, you see that look right there? So, bottom line is, is we're going to talk about our zone plays. My personal preference, because this is my video, right? Or my presentation. I don't like a lot of the <clears throat> mid zone to the tight end, okay? Because I never get the Sam backer to move enough, okay? Because we're seeing a lot of this over defense. You know what the over is. But if I got a lead back in front of him, he can pick him up, and I like it, okay? Now, let's go to the split end, okay? When we're running to the split end, I have no lead back in front of them. And I like to get in a set like this. I've got three guys to the right. You see this? I've got a tight end. I've got a wide receiver. I've got a wide receiver, all right? Or I might have this right here, okay? I've got a tight end and another tight end and a wide receiver. And I love running this mid zone over here at the inside leg of the tackle with about two feet, two feet splits. Why? Because nowadays, most of the defenses you see in college, pro, and probably high school, they like to put the three technique to the strong side. When they like to put the three technique to the strong side like this, usually over here there's a nose guard, and there's a will backer, and a mic, and the Sam's over here somewhere, okay? Okay, over here, let's say I got a nose guard, I got an end, I got a will backer, I got the mic, and I got the Sam over here somewhere. Now I love running the mid zone over here, okay? Because what we're doing is I've got more of a nose tackle on this side, more of a nose tackle, and I can work these guys together. And I, when I run at the inside leg of the tackle and I slow it down with a drop step opposite, I don't put a lot of pressure on him. I'm not running too wide, which puts pressure on his block. This guy can, can block him. We actually pass block him. The ball gets over here. This guard can help. The ball goes here, 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 whatever. So in my opinion, the best way to run the mid zone is to run it weak from one back and run it at the inside leg of the tackle with the shoulders turned, the drop step opposite, bite a little time, and you can make some cuts, OK? So again, we'll talk about these plays at a later time, but I'm just talking about the mid zone. Now notice, I am not having the running back take a drop step crossover, roll, because invariably his shoulders will be like that, and what, what's going to happen? He's going to cut back, okay? The same thing if I was running it to the strong side with a lead back. If the running back <coughs> squares his shoulders and he gets it like that, he's going to cut back most of the time, okay? And when you cut back too fast, let me show you what happens. Say we were running the mid zone to the weak side, okay? All right, and we're coming over here, and his shoulders are square, just like this. All right, and we're, we're helping over into here, and that back cuts back. This nose guard, the center's block, he falls right back over the play, all right? This linebacker falls right back over the top, okay? It'd be the same thing if you were going with that lead play to the strong side. I got the tackle, I got the end, I got the safety, I got the Sam. If this back cuts back too soon, you're with me? All these guys come back off the blocks. This guy comes way in here. So the bottom line is, that's why we like the shoulders turned, all right? So before we get into the specifics, I'm going to again uh, repeat myself. And I'm going to tell you where I like the back lined up at six and a half to seven yards, probably seven yards with a fullback in front of them. I'm going to drop the opposite foot, pivot off that foot. I'm going to run for the inside leg of the tackle when I have a lead back, OK? All right, I'm going to run for the inside leg of the tackle to the open end away from three receivers. Okay, I'm going to drop step opposite. I'm going to run for the inside leg of the tackle. I'm going to be approximately six and a half yards depth. And I'm going to press the ball up in here, cut, cut, whatever, so forth and so on. So that's when I want to run the mid zone. Okay, and we'll get into the techniques a little bit later. <clears throat> okay, right, now again... 
Specifically, uh, the reason is when we run to the weak side, we see a little bit more of a nose guard where we're going to get over here and try to get into that void on the weak side, away from a three by one set, okay? When I'm going to the strong side, when I'm going to the strong side with a lead back, okay, I usually have a three technique over here, and this back can search out the linebacker, whether he falls here, because he's coming from the backfield. Okay, but remember I told you if you just had one back in the backfield, he never moves the defense enough to make this guy move, so this guy goes to block him and he can fall right back inside, but when I have a lead back to get him, then I'm okay, all right? So again, I think we've covered the course. Okay, so again, the only reason I covered the mid zone first is because most people, that's the zone play they know, all right?